In this episode, I'm going to talk about bargaining rules. All right. So mathematically, um, they are defined as functions, which basically map uh, the set B, uh, kind, kind of a script B, into Rn. All right. What does that mean? That means, so what is this set script B? Script B is the set of all bargaining problems between those N negotiators. Okay. That means you fix the set of players, set of negotiators, and then um, you change the payoffs. You change the, remember, a bargaining problem has two elements, S and D. So you change the payoffs or the utility functions and or you change the uh, disagreement point. Well, then voila, you get another bargaining problem among those N individuals, all right? So create all those, you know, potentially infinitely many bargaining problems. So the bargaining rule is going to map every single bargaining problem in this set into a vector, a payoff vector in Rn. But the important thing is it should be mapping to a payoff vector which is feasible for the given bargaining problem. Meaning, if your bargaining problem at hand is SD, well then, the bargaining rule, I'm sorry, it's not capital F, I prefer to use small f. The bargaining problem is going to be a vector in the set S, okay? So it's basically, mathematically, just a function, all right? It basically maps every bargaining problem into a vector, a payoff vector, a feasible payoff vector, all right? A feasible payoff vector in that bargaining problem. So that's it. Well, intuitively, what does it really mean? Well, it means the following. Remember, in a cooperative game theory approach, we do not investigate the strategies between the players, the timing of the game. So these details we ignore. What we want to understand is, given the problem, what type of solutions or outcomes are acceptable or good? So therefore, for any given problem, we need to know a, a sort of a potential outcome or potential solution so that so that's kind of a de that defines a rule right for each bargaining problem the rule assigns some solution and then we judge how well this rule is um, because you know rule may provide very nice acceptable solutions under some problems but it may actually in a sort of end up with very unacceptable, weird solutions or outcomes in other potentially interesting bargaining problems. So therefore, therefore, we do not judge the outcomes. We do judge the rules. Okay? That's very important. Once again, the reason is we do not want to have a rule which is going to give us perfectly acceptable solution in one specific bargaining problem. We want to have a rule which is going to give, always give us acceptable outcome. Well, obviously, this is a daunting task, right? I mean, it's a difficult task. Uh, but the question is, if we are seeking the best potential rule, uh, I'm sorry, a good rule, well, let's find the rule that is going to be, um, you know, always good if there is such a thing. So that's sort of the, uh, our, our uh, interest. Uh, we're not going to uh, sort of search those nice rules. This is sort of the subject of the next episodes. But let me sort of give you three kind of interesting uh, 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 bargaining rule. Uh, they don't have any specific name. I just made them up. So the first one basically says the following. Given your bargaining problem, S and D, your solution is D. Right? Basically, that says, uh, these guys... Oh, by the way, the bargaining rules, in, in one interpretation, you can interpret the bargaining rules as if um, sort of a wise, neutral third party 
these, these guys, these negotiators come to this wise guy and asks, well, we have a problem. We have a sort of a dispute. We, we need to resolve it through negotiation, but we don't really know how to negotiate. We don't really have to know. We don't really know how to come up with a solution. Would you recommend us a solution? So this wise person says, use this rule, whatever your problem is, all right, apply this rule. Well, obviously you may say for different rules, apply different rules. I'm sorry, for different bargaining problems, apply different bar uh, bargaining rules. Well, that's a wise choice. But again, once again, we are trying to find a universally good rule, if there is such thing. So here, the recommendation is always uh, choose the disagreement point. Okay, well, this is just a rule and it works for any bargaining problem. Right? It is well defined, I mean. Uh, for any bargaining problem you suggest, it just recommends the, uh, 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 the uh, uh, what is this? Uh, the disagreement point. Well, now we can judge, right? Very intuitively, is this a good rule, a bad rule? Well, this is not a perfect rule. It, it, it is, in a sense, a nice rule because it's individually rational. Nobody gets worse than his or her uh, outside option or disagreement point, but this may actually be inefficient, right? They may actually waste. So if you consider this buyer-seller problem, it basically says don't make in a trade, which is crazy because these guys can actually come up with some price, which is going to, uh, you know, give a higher utility to both buyer and the seller. So it's not a good suggestion really in one sense, uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty acceptable in another sense, like individual rationale. Let's look at the second rule. The second rule, a bit maybe uh, complex, a bit more complex than the other one. Uh, the rule basically suggests for any bargaining problem SD, arg max x1, where x is in s. So what does that mean? First of all, what is arg max? Well, it basically says you need to maximize some function of whatever um, some, I don't know, G function. So maximize that by choosing whatever. And then arg is the, uh, well, whatever, you know, X maximizes this function, the argument is, is the X itself. We don't really care about the value of G at that point. We, we, we care about the X itself, all right? So it is the argument that maximizes the G is what we are after, not the value of G itself, okay? So here, um, so what we have is argument arg max x1 by choosing x in S. It basically says the following, hey, look, look at your bargaining problem, all right? So I'm gonna go back to my original, uh, you know, buyer-seller example, 100, 100. Remember, D was the zero point. So it says, I'm going to maximize uh, the surplus of player one only, all right? And as you know, this is basically what player one's payoff can take at most 100. So therefore, this is the, remember, the X in S, which gives me the maximum X1, is this point, which is in fact, X1 is 100 and X2 is zero, okay? Well, if you change the bargaining problem to this one, all right, so this is x1, this is x2, um, this is, I don't know, 50, this is 50, whatever d is uh, 20, 20. So it says, well, choose this point, 50, 0 this time, because it is the maximum, it, it's the, the maximum feasible payoff vector which maximizes players one surplus or utility, okay? Um, so this is how it works. Well, is this an acceptable uh, or sort of a nice uh, bargaining rule? Well, it depends on your judgment. Well, if you're looking for something, um, for example, individually rational, well, it, it doesn't always give me individually rational payoff. Well, in this example, yes, it did give me individually rational. Um, however, here, for example, it's not going to give me individual or rational payoff because all, I think it's obvious it basically doesn't really care about D, right? The disagreement. Well, then what, what about this? Uh, define the rule as such that arg max x1, but this time choose your x's from ISD set. Huh. So 
When you try to maximize x1, you know, the surplus of player one, well, choose your axis from the individual set of uh, individually rational uh, feasible payoffs. So in this example, D is zero, right? So all the S is individually rational. And so therefore, it is still going to be 100 and zero. However, in this problem, um, the individual or rational payoffs are going to be in this region. Well, what is this point? I, I don't know, to be honest. Oh, I, I know. Well, I think this is, well, first of all, 20 for player two. Well, what about player one? I don't know. Let's say it's 40. So therefore, according to this problem, all right, so if SD is that one, well, then this solution is going to provide 40 to player one, 20 to, uh, to player uh, two. However, if this is the uh, bargaining problem, this solution is going to be 100 and zero. Okay, so these are just three random rules I picked. Um, clearly, as I said, um, you know, they have some nice properties and not so nice properties. So one of them, so this one is individual irrational, very good, but it's clearly not, I mean, in some problems here, for example, or here, it's not going to give us a rash, I'm sorry, efficient, uh, because, you know, uh, D is not efficient. The boundaries are always efficient. Uh, check out our earlier episodes. And here the efficient outcomes are on the boundaries again. And so uh, this is always going to be giving us inefficient outcomes unless D is an efficient outcome. And then here in this problem, it is actually going to give us efficient outcome, right? I mean, it's always going to give us something on the boundaries, but the, the, the problem is sometimes it may give us, in some problems, it may give us uh, not individual or rational outcomes. So this rule is sometimes good, not sometimes uh, good. So it's like sometimes bad, I'm sorry. Uh, what about this problem? Well, this problem, it's, it seems like um, it's, it's good uh, almost in any problems in the sense that it's, it's going to give us individual or rational payoffs because it d does actually care about individual rationality. And uh, it's, it's, it's most probably, I mean, my intuition by just looking at these two examples is, 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 is enough, in fact. Um, well, it's, it's going to give efficient, uh, pretty efficient uh, outcomes as well. But the problem here is, you may argue, well, this is not going to be fair, well, well, whatever it means. All right. Well, here, it only cares about player one. Well, what about player two, though? Right. I mean, why this process is not fair? Uh, I mean, doesn't really care about player two. It should care about player two as well. Right. Because... He's also one of the players in, in, in included in this problem. So therefore, uh, you can bring much more interesting properties that your uh, bargaining rule should satisfy. So uh, what we do, therefore, is we define some set of axioms, which we think they're nice properties that the rule should satisfy, and then try to come up with rules that will satisfy those properties. Okay, so we're going to, uh, this is exactly what we're going to do next.